Hello and welcome to another video here on my channel. This is the glorious, apparently, CLD2950. Now, I had one of these as my first player and it gave me no end of grief, to be perfectly honest with you. What would happen to it is the turn mechanism would jam. So I'd be playing back a disc, it would be flipping over to side two, and all of a sudden, or something like that, anyway. And basically, the disc would be jammed in the drive, and the return head up here would no longer be returning. So, what I did with my one was it was a spring missing, which I actually I can't see it on that, to be honest with you, um, which is uh, somewhat concerning. But not too concerning. Uh, but uh, there was a spring on it that I noticed was missing, which made the whole top part be a bit floppy. So when I changed it to another spring, I actually salvaged out of a floppy drive. Um, it worked kind of a little bit, maybe just slightly, but it wasn't great. Um, it still would get jammed. So basically, I am an absolute, another 100% newbie when it comes to the CLD2950. So, what is it? Well, the CLD2950. Uh, and the CLD1950 are the two brother machines, or sister machines. Now, I absolutely and utterly can't stand the word flagship player. I've seen people saying that the CLD310 is a flagship player. The 315 is a flagship player. Right. This particular machine here was the top-end player for the European market that played back both PAL and NTSC. Its successor would have been the CLD D925. Uh, and that's basically it. Now that's my knowledge of it, and that's all that I that's all I can tell you. But when it comes to inverted commas flagship players, um, these would not be flagship players. The H9s and all those sort of cracks. Now they're flagship players. The only problem with them babies is that they are a Japanese most of them. B they play NTSC only. C they're in Japanese, and D they're from Japan. Uh, so shipping them over to Europe or even America um, can be expensive and can also be uh, problematic. So if you know somebody local that has one, it uh, may be worth getting them. Um, there was, of course, um, the CLD9... CL, D, DVL, excuse me, uh, 909 and a 919. Uh, and there was a European version and an American version. And basically the difference between the 909 and the 919 is the ability to play back DTS, DVDs and 919 that isn't available on the 909. And uh, basically what that has, I've never actually seen the inside of one, but apparently it has two carriages on the inside and you have basically a carriage that carries the laser for the DVD and a carriage that carries the laser for the actual um, laser playback. So that would have been the final uh, model made for the European market. So you would have had the 2950 dual sided uh, player then you'd have the 925 dual-sided player, NTSC and dual-sided, so PAL NTSC. And then you'd have the uh, 919 series and 909 series. Um, there seems to be a few flavours of them as well, black ones and silver ones and, and sort of a blush gold. Um, so you may see different colours of them around. So just verify which one you're buying before you buy them. But uh, personally, I'd probably be sticking with the 925 or maybe even this fella here because it's dedicated to Laserdisc and I don't like the idea of playing both DVDs and Laserdisc. I would be okay with it if it was using the same laser, but it's actually using a separate um, laser. So that just means there's more things to go wrong. And as I said, with this particular machine, I had a lot of things go wrong with it. Uh, well, not this one. This is one that just arrived to me. So I don't know what's wrong with this one. Um, so what? I, oh, let me do, do, move that far. So what I was told was wrong with this machine was that it would sometimes play back the disc. It would sometimes stop, not play back the disc or jam. And basically, nearly 100% of the time, when I tried to play side B of the disc, it would send the laser back. It rotates this whole this whole mechanism here at the back. Basically, rotates. So I'll show it to you when we get there. The laser goes all the way back into this. This whole carriage does a uh, 360. <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, I know people are listening going, 360. Yeah, right, it doesn't. It's called a 180. But I'm actually thinking of, um, what's the film? It actually popped into my head there today as well. Um, Last Action Hero. You know, you Sicilian idiot. You know, if I had it in a 360, you'd be back where you start. Exactly. So it's a 180. So basically it starts at the bottom. Goes up. There's a little bar down there which you can't see. 
I'll be showing you this now when it gets me. I'll, I'll video it so you actually see it uh, the best we can. There'll be a disc in the way, it's the only problem. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically there's a carriage bar there. There's a, there's a, there's a sort of a half crescent turning uh, cog at the back. So the laser goes into that, it turns around on it, rotates on it, and then it reads the top of the disc. So uh, it's a very complicated mechanism, I think, and I much prefer the mech in the uh, 925s and that. So we're going to take off the bits that I know, because some of this machine I wouldn't know, uh, and some of it I just haven't got a clue. Um, actually, it may be worth turning it on. I'll tell you why, because we can see if we can get the, the drawer ejected. It's easy to eject the drawer. If the machine turns on, and the drawer is ejecting, let the drawer eject because it's a lot easier to uh, let the machine do it than it is to do it manually on all the machines, not just this one, so we'll do that now just be careful if you put a disc in it and lo and behold it actually turns on, well that's a first so it survives this journey, anyway that's a good thing the power supply in these as well actually seems to be a little bit beefier uh, than the power supplies in the later models um, it, it definitely seems to be a bit more robust than his than does in the later models but um, I haven't had one of these fail yet, touch wood thank god um, but uh, most likely candidates on this power supply like any other would be the uh, famous caps they are the most likely cause of concern, all these caps they fail you know with, 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 with uh, abandon they also, I see two caps here so we could have two filtering you could basically have two, two basic power coming in and been filtered with the two caps um, or one cap, I wouldn't be that technical to understand that but good chance it's basically smoothing out that ripple of current which is what I do know about so when the power's coming in it's going to basically make sure that the power coming in is a, st a steady constant and that's important for playback, especially on the likes of the laser disc player or the VHS player because you want to make sure that the power coming in uh, to the uh, board and all that is nice and clean um, and why do you want that? Well you want to get a clean picture so that could be the reason why a lot of people swear by this particular machine, I don't mean mother fu I mean as in swear by it as in quality wise because you know, say like as a superior picture maybe because this power supply is that little bit beefier and uh, has more filtering capabilities I'll take this bar out of the way here so you can just see it a bit easier from where you're at there um, this particular bar here is to keep the chassis uh, nice and tight um, most of these screws are the same. I like these screws in this actually. That's what I like about this. These older models is they seem to be better built, and in insofar as the build quality on them is very high tech and very complicated, you know. So it, it, it just it screams, you know, high quality, you know. Whereas the 925s and the are very sort of slapdash, but I don't think they're slapped together. I think what's happened there is they've this, they've looked at this and went, all right, we've got as far as here, you know, where can we go next? You know, uh, we want to get, we want to basically get the technology and make it even better and refine it down so we can use it in a few different models. Um, so that's what it looks like to me. To get this drawer out of here, by the way, um, is slightly different, slightly different method to the other machines. You may notice if I move it out there. There's a screw there, and there's a screw here. Do you see this? So you need to remove that. I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to take them out of there. Okay, so they're gone now. Gone in the bin, throw them away. You don't want them. I think this should just come straight out. Where's the catch here somewhere? I've been so long since I took this drawer out of here. There was something else. I know there was something else. What is that missing? Let me see now. Hold on a second. I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna try to figure out what it is so I can put my big noggin in the way and uh, I'll start the video back again and show you what it is. I can see where the catch is. Uh, I can see what it's holding on to, but you might not see it from the angle you're at there. So I'm going to actually remove the other few parts just to get to it, just so you can see a bit clearer. Now I'm just going to take out this. That's not going to work. I'm just going to take out this board here. When you're in here and you're taking out all the screws, put them over there. Over here. These control board that's up here um, should actually fold out onto the side. Don't plug this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually looking at a wash machine there uh, last week, and I was having a look at the inverter motor and said to myself, "Did I actually unplug this thing?" Anyway, it was as dead as a door now. But uh, I'm amazed and set myself on fire or something. I thought it was little. 
thing there for this. Where is it? Oh yeah, there is there. See that? It's little little hooks that here that, that lets you hang that bow there. The idea of that is that you can have the machine running and you can then put your uh, oscilloscope on the, the parts over here then to get a you know a better reading. You see how complicated it is inside here compared to the machine. Look at this, look. It's a real it's a real melange of parts inside here. Um you know I mean real complicated. I like it. But it just to me it just seems to scream, you know, this is like this is high tech stuff, you know. You know what I mean? Like the other one is is, is, is what I, I look prefer looking at because you've you basically got everything, you've you've slimmed it down, you've made it nice and neat and nice and tidy. But uh, in here there's an awful lot of there's an awful, there's an awful lot of cable. Um so yeah. Make sure you know what you're doing before you open up one of these or do the one that you don't mind if you break it. Um I still need to take it part out of the way here so as you can see this. It's probably best to take these parts off of here anyway to get to this. So. Just make sure you make sure you keep all the screws the same size in a, in a box. Now at least we can see it. So to take the drive drawer out, like I said, take the two screws out, and then this little fella here. So you're bringing it up and then pop him, and there is the drawer out. So look at the back of this fella. Huh? That's even okay in this one. Look! 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 That's perfect. Uh, the drive drawer and the other one won't fit into this one, just in case you're wondering. And um, they are totally different. Now this was slipping and sliding. Slipping and sliding. Didn't sound too good. This doesn't look too good either. Don't look at this. Nice. See now he's deformed, you see? He is deformed. He should be a perfect circle, but he's not a perfect circle anymore. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, let's be careful with that now, yeah. Be careful uh, fiddling around with this one. This is not the same as the other one, so you want to make sure that the uh, cogs don't go spinning out the wrong direction. It'll end up in worse trouble. So I noticed on these boards too, there's also a battery on them. I noticed that on my, my other one. Um, there's like a, a, a battery there for memory. Um, I'm presuming a capacitor replaces that in the other machines, but uh, it may be a cause for concern. It isn't a Varta, mind you. It's an EL, uh, e, ELNA, yes. But uh, yeah, I didn't notice in the last one was a battery in it. So, uh, you know, I'm sure if that fella blows up or starts to corrode, we, you could be in some serious serious doo-doo you know hasn't done it on this one though um but i think it leaked on the other one but my other one uh my other machine won't read a cd and it won't oh sorry it will read a cd but it absolutely point blank refuses to uh read uh okay so uh yeah, my battery just died there so you won't notice that though because i'm a, because i'm brilliant no you won't notice it because i'm not gonna have it in the video uh, I don't want labour. Where's the high performance lithium grease? Hmm. I'll have a bit of that, please. But I also want to clean off this thing, so I'm going to get a bit of a bit of cleaner. Clean this pad up. So unfortunately, this pad is black. So, ew. Yes, the pad is black, so we're not going to know how much we've cleaned now. We're not cleaned now. Do 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 do. I have a. Uh, uh, I use this foam cleanser to clean a lot of this stuff up. Um, wow, that's an awful lot of dirt. Um, let's do this part of it again. Look at the time. See there, you can see the date and all this. Look, so you know what time I actually did this. On well, ninth of the ninth, twenty twenty. That like now, still a bit of dirt in there. You see, if this pad is dirty, uh, the disc will slip, and that'll cause trouble with it reading the disc. It also also won't eject the disc until it stops moving. So if the pad is slipping, it'll uh, just keep on spinning the disc, spin the disc until it actually stops naturally. Where if it's not slipping, um, it will you know it'll stop the disc. It's like there is a parker break on. Oh, I'm only just sort of room here. And there is a park and brake on it that parks the disc. What I mean by that is that it actually slows down the speeds of the spindle. But uh, if it slips, it doesn't do that, I noticed. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a problem. 
it does seem I wouldn't go clean on any lasers until we play play back a disc and see where we are. Um, it looks a bit dry there, but we what we'll do is we'll try to get some this grease I like, but uh, I like the spray stuff a little bit better. Any problem with the spray stuff? Try to get a bit of grease in there. Get grease in that cog. It, let it do the work for me. Let it do the work for me. Um, what I mean by that is when the when the cog spins and moves. I don't, you didn't even see that, did you? This is in here. That's a shame. And um, we move it over. Right there in a second. I'm going to use the spray here. But I'm just going to have to cover up that laser. Otherwise, it's going to get it's going to get coated and stuff. I'm just so going to just, try and get uh, some grease in here if I can. Oh, it's white spray now, isn't it? Yeah, just get a bit of grease in there again. Problem with it is you're trying to get trying to get over spray. That's the last thing you want. Um yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get some grease into that section there. Um, so there's a grease on that now. Now there's a, there's a rail at the back. And there's this, this mech, mech at the front here. So we're just going to try to put a bit, a bit of grease in behind that if we can. Just a smidgen, just a smear. Little dab will do you, yeah? alright? Don't go overboard, but whatever you do. And you let the mechanism... You know, feed the grease in itself because you might as well. No, it's just it, the mechanism will take it in. It'll, you know, it'll lube as it moves. You know, rather than you having to do it. Most of the mech should be all right. There's enough in there now to move that. Problem is this bit here. I'm gonna try to get rid of this if I can. It's this top runner bar here, and there's a bar underneath. As far as I know, yeah, stay right there. So. So we'll basically there's a bar under here. So that bar you see down there, it's matched under here. So when the laser goes to the back and rotates around, it then runs along the top bar, which is underneath this piece here. So it should be alright. Uh, now the bit at the back is another problem. Make sure that it's greased up. Uh, I don't think we can get that back off this other. No, we can't. So the only way to get to that back. To actually grease it on this model is to take out the whole mech, which I don't really want to do, um, simply because it's going to be a pain in the bottom half of my body. Um, yeah, like that's a real pain to get in there, the doozy. The only way to do it is to take out this whole bottom mech, really. Lift it out and then get to the back. Where on the later models we can take off this back cover. That's not a cover though. And there's no other easy way of doing it either because no, there isn't. There's no easy way of doing it. Oh, do, 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 do. what we try to do is I see if I can get some more of the spray grease down there. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to uh, upset the appetite. Now, make sure I didn't put any grease on anything else I shouldn't put it on. To. The last thing I want is lithium grease in an area where you don't want it. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. Yeah, I don't see any grease anywhere we don't want it. Right, what we'll do now is we will uh, reassemble it and uh, we'll then do a, a quick test run. So, if you don't want to watch me reassemble it, um, you can always, you know, fast forward, I suppose. Um, other than that, we're now going to reassemble it. The last thing I want is spare parts. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to remember if I've done something wrong there. I don't think so. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. Let her write screws and I did hmm, what are they for? Well hello there. No, they are for the Yeah. Ah Japers. They are for screwdriver in my pocket. That's always handy. So yeah. Like this, like this is what I was saying about the the quality here. Um, I have to say, I like the uh, even the screws that have a have a copper a copper coating on them. Is it? Um, that's I think they're absolutely fabulous. Huh? It's a real nice touch. I just don't know. I just think that's think that's actually fa fabulous. Like it's uh, what else can you say? Let's take that out of there now. Um, like really, like it's just a. Very nicely put together machine. Um, let's get this top in here now. Yeah. We'd be interested now to see if the discs, when you put them in, will slip or slide or will it rotate around the other side? Um, you know, we can see then if there is further problem with this. But, um, Everything looks intact on the mech that I can see. Like it is actually in place, you know. Actually, I'll put some grease in that bottom rail there. I'm gonna do that now. The bottom bar there, I didn't put any grease on it, so I'm gonna just put a wee dram. A wee dram on it. A wee dram. So we do that now. Get it back out again, now. Right, so now, yeah, where are we? Just a little dabble there at the back there, and on the top of the nipple, of the like the bar, like you know, that's where it's going to make its first contact. So, if you can slide on there to receive, and um, it'll be absolutely fabulous. A little bit down there. Yeah, my original machine that I bought and got me started on the, the days this journey was one of these babies. Uh, I bought it off a guy. And, Basically, he had a, a, I said a story before, but just in case you haven't watched some of the previous videos, he basically had a Sony machine, um, a bit like the Sony video that I showed you uh, in, in one of the previous episodes. And um, he had no end of trouble with it. So eventually, he brought it back to the shop and he said to them, Look, I have no end of trouble with this uh, Sony machine. And uh, the guy in the shop said, Okay, fine, no problem. We got these new ones, Pioneers, and people tend to like them more. So basically, he took back the Sony off them, which he brought back them for repair many times. He said they bought a Pioneer machine, but uh, whatever he did to the Pioneer machine, it, it wasn't uh, wasn't exactly what I'd call brilliant. Um, I had I had like loads of trouble with the Pioneer machine. Like I said, it, it, the the laser would go to the back. It would try to go roto rotating around, get jammed. And I've already said that in this video. But uh, that's what would happen. Um, okay, so we are assembling correctly. And there shouldn't be anything there to do because we. Just give it a quick wipe anyway. Yeah. Make sure it's people back on, okay. Now just make, make sure you put the four screws in here. Um, I've done this before, where I nearly started playing on a disc, and the top clamp wasn't in place. Yeah, that would have been interesting. I was only designing in place to stop it from actually spinning the disc. You know, there's nothing, no safeguards. Um, so it'll just start spinning the disc, and suddenly it'll take off down the room, I suppose. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? A giant 12-inch laser disc, aluminium frisbee. Coming towards your knock Lovely jubbly. Right then. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is put in the drive tray and the two screws associated with that. So I'm going to do that off camera and uh, we then press play and see what happens. Oh, in case you thought I forgot, I did. So, brand new rubber band uh, to replace the uh, one that was on it. So um, I'm going to stick that in now, then put the drive tray in, and then we turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so I've just put the disc in, it recognises it as a laser disc, so uh, now we're going to see if it actually plays the disc. Well, lo and behold, it's playing the disc. 
we get a picture. Picture on this screen is very sketchy, so uh, I can't judge whether it's <laughs> whether it's working right or not. Um, picture's okay, but it's a bit there's a bit of interference. But um, it could be the comb filter thing you have back here. It's not the best. Um, it's better to try it on the equipment inside. So uh, we'll take it in there in a minute, and we'll we'll, we'll have a look at on the plasma TV. But uh, so far, so good. So I'm hoping you can see that uh, turn mech in the background there. So I'm going to press play now. I noticed that this has the same glitch as the other one that wasn't working for me. And that glitch is basically, uh, there's, a, there's a scratch on this disc. And I noticed that the more modern lasers that are in good nick seem to skip over and I get no... Hold on. Just pause it. So I noticed that the more modern machines, I don't seem to get any uh, skip or hop or jump uh, over that scratch. Whereas on this machine here, it basically jams on the full on. Um, it also jams on the full on on the CLD 4300. So they're looking for a very perfectly flat and perfectly smooth disc with no undulations or gouges or cracks. So if you're looking for a machine that'll play back a disc with a scratch in it or some sort of imperfection, I would definitely go for the CLD D925s, not this one. This is looking for discs that are pretty perfect, and it's not the first player. This is the third one of these that were. So there's, I've got two of these drives, one that's not working, but when it did work, and the 1950, and they all have the same issue when playing back this particular disc. Whereas I don't see that in some of the more modern ones, they seem to play over and have no problem with that. So uh, that to me would tell me to avoid these players um, if you can. Um, but if it's the only one available, then go for it because most of this is going to play back anyway. Right, okay. Now, I'm going to zoom into this bit up here. I'm going to pause the video, zoom in, and let's see how okay, it goes. Okay, you join me here, and now we're going to basically get the machine to flip the disc side B. Now, as you would notice, the machine doesn't actually flip anything. What it does in this machine is it actually sends the laser up to this particular mechanism and rotates this full mechanism. That's the plan. I've greased it up because I suspect that's the reason why I wasn't doing it in the first place. I didn't try it beforehand, we're trying it now live, so first time ever, flipping the disc, will it do it? Here we go. Sounded pretty good to me. Let's see if we get a picture. Let's see if we get a picture. Yep, we got a picture. I'm going to fast forward it. Oh, sorry about that. So you can see the laser moving now. Yeah, we have a picture. We definitely have right, so this is actually handheld. Um, the first thing people would notice is the uh, actually the picture looks totally different on the TV than it does on the camera. Hmm, always seems to do that. Anyway, uh, yeah, with the aspect ratio, um, I can't actually change it. It appears to be locked in position. I have no idea why. Um, but anyway, this is just to show that the picture um, quality is good and that the drive is playing back the video. Just to take my word for it, that it actually is the CLD2950. Um, when it comes to the power supplies uh, and that sort of stuff, um, we'll go through that in detail at a later stage. Um, there's plenty of videos online um, explaining uh, power supplies. And uh, I need to find out more information about the power supplies to try and repair um, the ones from our other machines. And of course, the one that is in the future when it decides to go Harry Carry. But the most likely causes are the capacitors. So. Start with them, change them, they're easy to do, just follow the values. Um, you can increase the voltage a little bit, but uh, don't change the uh, UF value that's written on the side of them. Make sure that is correct. So if it's 2000 UF, make sure you replace it with 2000 UF. And of course, make sure the machine is unplugged from the wall before you do anything like that, or play with the power. Um, yeah, so uh, this is actually the uh, THX uh, demonstration laser disc. Um, it's only available in surround sound, but uh, it sounds pretty darn good, and it is actually a good test um, of video picture quality. I think the video picture quality on this is actually pretty good, even compared to the likes of the um, actual genuine uh, movies. Not the genuine movies, the you know the the actual 
box sets of Star Wars, and I think the picture in this is actually pretty good as well. So it's a good reference. Um, it's a good disc to get if you can get your hands on for a reasonable price, like sort of 20, 30 quid. Um, but don't go spending thousands on it, it's not really worth it. Um, I acquired a, a very beat up copy of it, which is what you're watching now. There's a, a gouge out of the disc, um, and the, the guy kindly gave me a, a little bit of a refund on that, which is very nice of and uh, later on he actually happened to have another one for sale and uh, I said to him, well, can I buy that off you? And he says, yeah, no problem, this disc is in great nick, he says, but the cover is shot. So I basically mixed one of the two and ended up with a complete THX set, but they're still, they're obviously, uh, you know, from a shop at some stage or some sort of guys bringing them out to demonstrate the uh, THX home cinema system um, that they actually came with because um, they're pretty beat up. Anyway, um, yeah, as I said, I can't seem to change the aspect ratio, it appears to be locked. So uh, that's that. So uh, yeah, that's the video playing back. And uh, all the machine appeared to need was a good clean and a good degreasing. And um, so I actually cleaned it off camera, a lot of the grease that was on it. And uh, the greasing that you're seeing uh, was me doing it on camera, just taking the machine apart yet again. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to like the video, like it. If you don't like it, thumbs down. If you like it, thumbs up. Up to yourself. And uh, please leave a comment down below. Criticisms, whatever, whatever you want to say, just put it down there. We'll have a look. Um, but uh, keep it, uh, you know, the criticism yeah, constructive. Um, because uh, that's what we need to hear is constructive criticism. So we can improve our videos in the future. And uh, update the videos where necessary and uh, add information. So that's enough rambling from me. If you've made it this far through the video, fair play to you. And uh, if you haven't, the uh, you know you might as well go down. By the way, the secret number for my account is one five seven eight 